Hello out there. It is so good to talk to y'all today. So today is Wellness Wednesday. And um, I have, since I already talked about music therapy, I thought I'd talk about art therapy. And I don't know, a lot of people don't like to do art therapy just because they feel like they're not creative. And it comes in so many different variances of ways. Like, okay, so creativity does not always include just art. Like, where you got a piece of paper and a pencil and you draw. You can build things. Like, um, you can make pieces of furniture. You could um, reorganize your cabinets. You can make cakes. Like, if you get this stuff, it's like... um what is it called model magic model magic like that's like if you really think about it it's like the stuff that they you if you roll it out and you can make it flat and, and combine the colors it's actually the same stuff they use like when they're baking they like cover a cake um you can use it to practice if you want to it does stiffen up pretty much pretty hard uh you can make masks you could cook and decorate the plate you could start to do gourmet cooking it's so many parts of art. Like, um, and don't always think of it as if it was just a. Don't always think of art as just being a piece of paper or a mural or whatever, just a drawing. It's actually more than that. You could garden. Um, when you actually plan out your garden, that starts to get you into your art mind. You could redecorate your house. You could, uh, and even with that, even with those things, you have to plan. So your plan could just be a sketch. I always tell people the story. I did not draw. Like, I was so afraid of drawing. I didn't draw until close to the end of my, um, um, yeah, I didn't, I didn't draw to close to the end of my college career. So I didn't, I didn't take drawing until like the last semester before I was about to graduate. So serious. Like, what if I didn't pass it? But I, it was like drawing E. I just, I didn't take it. I, I, it was just like, I was so scared about taking it. I thought I would never be able to draw. But actually, I started drawing, and I actually did a good job. Um, I'm surprised that I could draw as well as I do. I could draw. Like, I could actually freaking draw. Like, it is crazy. I could actually, I can actually illustrate. Like, I can actually, like, do shading. And, and I was taught by a very good, a very good and patient person very very beautiful and patient and i thought man you know like i'm actually i am seriously actually good at it and i am the person that'll be like oh my god that came from my hands like i probably should practice more and i don't i can freestyle draw um i do now i do like the ipad thing i do a lot of tracing just because it's like new and now i know like it's like graphics i can add it in i like the ipad so much better because like I said, if you do it on the computer, it's like a lot. Like you got to do the moving the mouse and stuff. Even though I can draw with the mouse, it's cool. But I love the iPad because I had a pencil. So um, even with that, like it's like so many parts of things. Like even cleaning out your car, organizing the back, or organizing your trunk, uh, keeping your house organized, making sure your refrigerator is lined up correctly. All the labels are pointing one way. Organization actually involves art, and it also involves something called spatial reasoning. So spatial reasoning is actually part of math. So then people would think, well, because they're not good with numbers, then they're not just they're not good at math. But some of you actually are. If you're able to look at the wall and say, oh, that's about two inches, you are actually that's spatial reasoning. If you say, oh, well, you put a you line up blocks on a wall. And you see, well, maybe you could fit like half of one or maybe two. And you go over there and you check and you write. That's actually spatial reasoning. So the, all that stuff involves each other. So math actually involves art. Art involves math. Um, sometimes I do. I practice math too. But just because sometimes I'm not, I don't get past a certain point. I'm trying to see, can I get past her? And most of the time, I cannot, but Khan Academy helps me a lot. Because Khan, he'll break it down to, like, all the parts, all the systems, everything. So, that's the good thing about Khan Academy. But, I really, really, really like how involved each of those things are. 
Uh, and I don't think that people actually explain it that way. And so that, that that's when people start to just like misconstrue who they are and what they can do and all. And it's like you can you are so capable of so much stuff. Sometimes I wish that we would do that too, though we would research what we can do against what we do do. Because if you actually see yourself, you'll see that you're a very brilliant person. But yes, yeah, spatial reasoning, that is actually a part of art. And it is actually a part of math. And just because you're not good with numbers does not mean you're not good with spatial reasoning. You know, if you could look at, a, at something and you could say, oh, that's about six, eight, six, six to eight inches. And you correct and you in the ballpark figure what it is. You actually have good spatial reasoning. If you could actually eye something and be like, okay, yeah, I, you know, I could kind of measure it out. That's spatial reasoning. You got it. Um. So anyway, art therapy, besides that part, because they don't tell you that part. Um, so appreciation. Art helps us revisit the value of ordinary things like the pretty colors and a splash of morning light on tablecloth or of or the familiar and non and nostalgic aspects of old beer cans. Art embraces appreciation. It really does. If you have an aesthetic that you like, even a body, a body type, if you have an aesthetic within somebody that you like or an aesthetic outside yourself, so some people like modern fine lines some people like vintage some people like to see people with wrinkles me i do i love i love wrinkles and freckles and all those different things that gives me that's my art appreciation i like trees that blow i like um i like the shape of pineapples uh drawn you know i like um like right now i got old brown paper on the wall i love old brown paper like I love cardboard. Like, it's so many things I love. Like, I've been appreciating art for a long time. So, um, it actually helps. And it's, and that is a part of art as well. Art appreciation. Even if you can't draw. Even if you don't have special reasoning. But you say, oh my God, I love peacocks. I love them. And you just, like, get a bunch of peacock pictures and put them all on the walls. And whatever you do. That's still art appreciation because somebody actually created that. Maybe you like really into furniture and you just like want to decorate the hell out of your house. And that's what you do. That's art appreciation. So all those things add something to you. You see, all those things, so that is art appreciation. All those things are very artistic and well articulated. I even have like a light wall, like not a light. I just got strings of lights. And I'll, um, and if I find something at the Goodwill or material or whatever, I hang it. I hang it so I can see it. Even in my room, like I was doing the brooches. So I keep, and I know it's some, if you look at my Instagram, you might see the videos, but I hang the material, which may or may not be switched out sometime with the bra too. But I hang material from, uh, from a clothesline in my room because I want to see the colors. Because I love how, I love the patterns. I like the, um, I love the patterns. I like how the patterns flow. You know, like I like the old patterns. It's like some stuff you can't really get it anymore. I got a curtain in my house. You won't be able to get the, the material pattern anymore. It's actually out. Of, it's out. You know, it's probably been out since like the seventies or the eighties. Probably the eighties, maybe the nineties. But uh, I love those things. I do. So that's my that's that's my art appreciation. You know, it's it's just what we do. So growth. When we see a picture of something we haven't personally experienced or an emotion that we don't have a personal context for, we can take the time to think about it, react to it, and empathize with it, or promote self-growth. Let me tell you how it, how this works with me. Sometimes I'm in so much pain that I have to express it. So then I create what I'm going to create to get a, get to, to get out of the pain. So um, that's the stuff I do. I know I mentioned the Dorian Gray, and now that's what I'm working on. I'm working on the Dorian Gray. I have other projects I work on. I also have my feel-good projects. I have the shawl. I'm working on the shawl. Um, and it has such a great story, right? That's why I'm an artist and not a a, re, a replicated artist, which I really think I will, once, I will become once I understand what it is I want to replicate. But, yeah, I'm an artist. You see, I'm, a, I'm an artist. I make pieces. I don't make posters and different things like that which a lot of artists do and I, I i really wish i could get on the ball with that but i don't think i made something that is a replica yet um like a cup or bowls or a set of dishes and which that is stuff i work on I, I buy those things and i try to design them and get them to where they need to be but 
um as an artist you see the growth is it's like say for instance i like on one day i might feel so happy about my son you know and then i work on something for him or um sometimes i just want to feel connected to people i might do uh i like those uh draw this in your style i did my first one I, i've done two of those so far and i have another one i want to do too so it's just i use the art as a way to go through my pain and my process when i'm writing i use it in between writing instead of having like a a brain it's like my brain break when i'm writing so i might be working on an art piece when i'm writing I also might be working on a music piece when I'm writing. I also could be trying to do some choreography, which now my choreography, oh my God, I think I'm just repetitive. But um, it is, it's such a, it's such a thrill. You know, art is such a thrill. And so um, that's it too. I mean, even if you think about art, like if I think about dancing, I would love to have like some kind of wings and like a piece of material that would like flow with my arm or something like that. Like that would actually make a noise like that. Foo, foo, sound, you know? So anyway, you know, see, that's, it's just, I think like that. And so even if you don't, even if it's a simplistic thing, sometimes it just ends up being some of the most beautiful stuff because you really weren't trying to like you you know it is it, it was just like you were just trying to express a simple thought and your simple thought that you express could end up being a brilliant thought to somebody else and so art therapy is for growth it's because you it helps you get past other stuff and it helps you also to create more interesting things so i and i even think about toy design like i'm getting this because my son has these dragons that we build them and the, the dragons have the between their wings, you know. But it's so nice sometimes when you got a piece of flowy fabric and it's when you when you pop it, when you pop the sheet, you know. It just makes a perfect noise. So, anyway, self-understanding. Art helps us to com complete our own unformed thoughts and ideas. We have an aha moment when we see a piece of art that perfectly captures a feeling or thought that we have had that we couldn't express. So that's why they do kids. They put kids in art therapy because the kids don't really know. And they don't know what they're drawing. They don't know what they're talking about. But as adults, we do. So self-understanding is it's a beautiful thing. Like it is, um, let me do it again. Art helps, com helps to complete our own unformed thoughts and ideas. So it helps you actually start to see other things that you didn't do. I remember when I first started art, uh, I guess it was my third because I processed like how my dad was like he would send me a box of clothes but we didn't we never spent time together like we never had um you know what I'm saying we spent time together then sometimes he'd be like oh my god he knows me you know but I didn't know how he knew me then all of a sudden he just didn't understand me anymore so um the self-understanding I had to process a lot of my feelings about my dad through my art like he never gave me flowers, but for whatever reason, I wanted flowers from boys. And um, what else? I don't know. It's For me, I felt like my dad is like more business, even though he's like really a homeboy. You know, I just felt like it was business. It wasn't, it wasn't love or anything like that. It's just business. You know, it's what he had to do. So, um... I don't know. I just, that's something I had to process that. So I, I first, I started with like a, a cup made out of flowers, you know, because I wanted flowers. I, I wanted the flowers, you know, and I never got them. And, um, so that was like one of my first pieces that I made. And then I made another piece where I had like all the thoughts that would come out of my head. Cause I was actually just in a depressed state. I was just in a lot of pain all the time. And, um, I didn't know what was going on and I, it was like all the rapes and all the all the, the different type of atmosphere that was on the campus and I had nobody really to talk to and I and when I took art I met my first teacher whose name is David awesome oh he was the person that told me that if you make a cup it's one of the most intimate pieces that you could ever make for somebody because they have to actually put it against their lips but I changed it to like any piece of art because, you know, if, if you make a blanket, it's the same way. If you make a plate, it's the same way. If you make you a little serving spoon set, it's going to be the same way. But he said it was, if you make a cup, I love David for that. If you make a cup, he was the most wonderful person I had ever met. A very 
a very uh, generous vegan. He's a vegan. And um, I just really appreciated him for that. So it did help me understand myself. Uh, we have an aha moment when we see a piece of art that perfectly captures a feeling or thought we that we have a uh, head that we couldn't express that's what the memes do so memes even if you make memes that's art too but that's the thing it's just like it just leads you to like oh my god i got this there's an artist uh right now that i absolutely love because he makes these very dark pictures his name is uh in dark life he's in st petersburg florida but it's in d-a-r-t-l-i-f-e and I just love, y'all know I love me some dark skin, Jesus Christ. So it is like he makes it to be one of the most beautiful situations in life. I love just like the color that he uses for the skin. It is so vibrant and lovely. And it actually pops, you know, his work actually pops out. And he makes it different and the same and Oh my God, it is wonderful, but it's called In Dark Life. It, 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 is, it is some of the most brilliant work I have ever seen. And so, um, I have to give him props for that. I just love it. Rebalancing. Our day-to-day -day lives influence the balance of, the, of our emotional makeup. We gain balance through art by taking a moment to observe, judge, and appreciate things we don't normally see in our responses to them. So, rebalancing. It's, it's, uh, I have to do this too. I do, I don't see a lot of things as ugly. Um, but when I do, I want to, I don't correct it. You know, I, uh, I want to know why I see it that way. You know, it, it's like, a, it's a mental check for me. Okay. So, um, but this is saying about our, our day-to-day -day lives influence the balance of our emotional makeup. We gain balance through art by taking a moment to observe, judge, and appreciate things we don't normally see in our response to them. And so, this is something else, too. It, it's like, um, I remember it was a gay pride parade, and I myself was having trouble, issues with that. Even though I didn't have issues with it from the past, it was just, how do I present that to my child? Just because I hadn't been around my kid, and then at some point, I had been judged for teaching children that gay people exist, Okay. So, um, I didn't know how to get it to my child because I didn't want the same information or whatever. I was actually feeling insecure about it. And when I thought about it, it's like I really did want him to see the gay pride parade because they had wings and they were naked and it was just all kind of stuff. So, this happens in St. Louis, Missouri. And that's something I want him to see. I want him to see the color of life because we actually stayed by the gay, like we stayed in an area where it was like the gay pride area you know like we stayed where that's where we lived at again it's like i should have just exposed him to it and then when he got exposed to it because i was trying to hide it he had such a negative experience about it i told but in a, in his negativity i went ahead and turned it into a positive his reactions were negative so i turned that into a positive so again it's like just like the art parts of life like um it's still a mental check like it's still and i'm not to say that that's part of that that is part of art too it's, it's a part of it's a mental check for yourself you know like why do i see this as ugly why do i see this as distasteful why is this like this why why do i hear this and i don't like that you see it, it it's that's part of art too it's a part of it too you still have to see the negative as well as the positive so it is it's a rebalancing and, and why would it be that way for you sorrow art doesn't just increase our capacity for joy it it validates our sorrows or provides a different perspective or vantage point from which to survey our own sadness and find a way to deal with it so yes yeah, sorrow um it's hard though i think when you are really really sad to create i've been really sad and i have not been able to create until i get to a point where i level out so um even when I have a window of tolerance moment, when I'm just out the window, when I just throw myself the fuck out, um, and it, when I come back in through the window, um, and I level out, then I'm able to create, then I'm able to process my feelings. I think it's easier for me to write, which is, again, it's another form of art. 
uh, it's either it's easier for me to write at the time that I'm in a sorrow moment or for me to talk about it or me to sing about it than it is for me to actually start to create an actual art piece. Um, which again, all those things are still art, but for me to actually put my hands in paint and all that stuff, not even sometimes, and sometimes the paint is so cool and it's like you just want it on your hands, you just want it on your fingers, you want it between your like I I want it everywhere. I can understand why people do body painting. If you're in a lot of pain, I would say do a body painting. If you had issues like real issues of trauma, I would say roll yourself in some fucking paint and just body paint. And don't be embarrassed about it. I would say hang the shit up outside so when the cars pass by they can see it. I'm so serious. It is like one of the most intimate things i love painting it's just like and i'm not a painter i wasn't trained in painting so if somebody were to ask me if i were to paint i'm a folk painter because i taught myself how to paint i don't know the rules of painting i don't look them up i just do what i do and i think for me to be a folk painter some of the work i've done it turned out pretty good so when i think about the sorrow jesus christ it it, it really does help you it helps you it helps you it helps you process the like the sadness about your life not only sadness, but the happiness too, but the sorrow. Jesus Christ. Oh my God. As a culture, black people, we have so much stuff to say. I actually told my son, I wish, you know, I know some black people wish they could actually just cut down the fucking trees. Some, I know we need some oxygen, but I, I, it's just like, if we were to start a war, the first thing we should do is cut down the fucking trees. You know, like, I just hate the fact that people hung bodies like that in trees. You know, um, and for nothing, for absolutely fucking nothing. The other thing that should be done, take out fucking uh, killing people because they committed crimes. What's that shit? That shit needs to be abolished. You killed, they killed a 14-year-old child. Also, take out putting your hands in these billy clubs and all this shit on people when you pull them over and stuff. Some of that shit really does need to be taken out. It really, truly, the fuck does. There is no reason why all this stuff should be happening. If a motherfucker put his hand on somebody and y'all see three or four cops on a camera actually jumping the person and they haven't done anything, they need to actually then go under investigation for review. They need to be afraid about their jobs just like teachers have to be. I haven't even done anything to anybody, but I'm on, you see what I'm saying? That we going to investigate. Okay, well, investigate that shit too, because human lives, they should be treated with care. So, yeah, it, it for me, um, yeah, it takes out, pe black people, we got so much to say. It's so much to say. And I think that's why uh, it's a, a, a resurgence of the black renaissance. It's a lot to tell you. We got a lot to tell you. Not only the pride that we have for ourselves, but also outside of that, the sorrow that we must go through just because we have pride in ourselves. Just because we are unique and different and rare individuals. That's what that's that's the part that pisses me off the most. It's like just because I'm different than you, I'm supposed to now what? Be punished for that? And it's like that's why I punish me and I haven't done anything. If you can clearly see that that person hasn't done anything, that person needs to go on. He needs without pay. And I'm telling you, they need to be investigated without pay. They need to start to make these situations very serious as a cost to their jobs. Now, if you go and, 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 okay, yeah, you check to see if he had his ID. Did you treat him the same as a white man? They need to actually have, okay, if I pull you over, this is my checklist of what I have to go through. And the public needs to know that too, okay? This is your checklist. They can put that on their dashboard. Now, if you don't follow this checklist and we got this shit on camera, you under review because something else is going on inside your head that's not clear. You see what I'm saying? And if you are putting somebody over for suspicion, I think they need to directly call into 911. That person should have the option to go ahead and call 911. Let me call 911 and let them tell me first what the issue is. That person can actually be there in the car. You see what I'm saying? You can take the keys, whatever. I don't know what y'all got to do to make the, to make sure that that person doesn't drive off or whatever. But at the same time, that person should be able to roll up their fucking window and call 911 and talk to the dispatcher about you pulling them over. Because some of this shit y'all doing is out of fucking control. It does not take four and five people to actually manhandle somebody that hasn't even done anything. That is out of control. Women, children. 
black men. That it, it, all the conditions we got health conditions that actually we have to take in factor. Some of them you can't even see. We got sickle cell anemia. I myself have thalassemia. You have blood diseases. You have heart clots. All this different stuff. Nobody's checking any of this before you actually sit there and jump on a motherfucker for nothing. And so, yeah, sorrow, oh my God. It is so much that we as people have to process. I don't care how much money you got in your pocket. I don't care where you live at. As a black person, at some point, we have to process the sorrow. Just being a lot, just being born as a black person, you have to process the sorrow. It's fucked up. Hope. Art can move us to tears. Beautiful art can bring tears of joy. Experience such heartwarming feelings, such a body encourage us to hope for the same thing for ourselves. So Y'all, my cousin used to make fun of me because, you know, I can bend my feet like a bar- ballerina. He'd be like, look at your feet. You know, like, because like, I could point my toes. I used to be able to stand on the points of my toes when I was young. I, I used to actually be able to just, like, and I could do it for hours. I would practice in the basement to be a ballerina. So, um, I did not, I did, I'm so happy I did not become a ballerina because my toes, I, I mean, they are bad, but they ain't that bad. But, anyway, so, um. What happens is, it's like, I see this, the in dark life guy. And it's a ballerina with the darkest skin. Oh, my God. I'm about to cry now. It is like the most beautiful thing I have ever seen in my life. Because that is something I had always, it's like, that's how I imagine a ballerina to be. I don't imagine a ballerina to be white. I didn't grow up like that. I, I grew I told y'all my auntie Colada, Coletta. She told me when I was little, she said, everybody black. God, she said, God, Jesus, you know, the Tooth Fairy, Santa Claus. She said, they all black. That's how we grew up. And that don't mean I hate white Santa Claus or I hate somebody. No, I don't. I just grew up knowing everybody was black. (laughs) So all the people that I thought were great were black. You know, uh, when I saw Whoopi Goldberg on the screen, you couldn't stop me. I didn't know what the color purple was about when I first saw it. I was eight years old. I didn't know... I didn't know what that was about. Um, well, or 10. I was 10. I think I was 10. Anyway, I didn't know what it was about. I had no clue. All I saw was Whoopi Goldberg. That's it. I just saw her. She was the most beautiful woman I had ever seen. As, but outside of Cheryl Repsa, Cher, Cheryl Pepsi Rob, I think that's her name. I don't know. It, it's I always forget her name. But um, she wanted what her legs in that. In it, she was in a sitcom and it was about a restaurant and she used to have these shiny black legs my stepmother too but my stepmother was a light-skinned woman but anyway so she it was just like oh my god like i had it was i you would have thought when i saw whoopi goldberg you would have thought i it's like i was just sitting on the floor looking up at her looking up at her or something when i saw her on hbo jesus christ the only reason i paid attention to color purple at all was to watch her that was it that's all i wanted to see i didn't care about nothing else all I wanted to see was her. I just wanted to see her going. I love when she's sitting in the kitchen at that chair and she rocking. And then she, uh, he get that gasoline. <laughs> and she jump up and jump out the kitchen. And she played the part the whole time. She was she went from young to old. Right there before our eyes. I thought she was amazing. Amazing. Hope. You see that? Hope. So... The man, when I saw that, he don't know. But I actually, I did. I cried because I just like, like that is that is something that I hope for. That is something I hope for to see that dark skin and that pink tutu. You know how good we look in pink. They can even change it to rose. That girl will kill it. You hear me? Just oh my god, I love it. I just love the brilliance of him. Um, and it just helps me appreciate and love every part of it. You hear me? And so I just, oh my God, I just think that it's like, he is one of the most profound artists to me right now. And I'm sorry to say, he really is. It's in dark life. N-D-A-R-T-L-I-F-E. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. It's like, this man blesses me with flowers. Like, it's almost like I got a garden inside of Instagram. But I'm serious. It's like, he just gives me love. I'm serious. And I can't afford nothing. I can't afford nothing. But... I'm so happy 
that he does that. And if I was to, I don't want to print it off. I want to buy it from him, you know? So I say, that's something I say for, um, because it just touches my soul. I'm telling you, I'm, I, I just, he is like so gracious. It's so gracious and loving. I'm sorry. Y'all just got to see it. But yes, hope. He is one of the people that actually do. It's another artist. He had, um, and I, I think I, I put it on my page too. I forgot his name, but he did a picture with a woman and she's sitting on the couch. And and I was saying, I know I said this before, it needs to be a large picture. Cause you I want you to walk right into her fucking vagina, right into them panties that she's sitting in. But she got panties on and you can see and she got a dress and she got her legs up and she's smoking and I don't know if she drink it, but she's sitting with her back against the couch. And it just looked like, man, you could imagine they probably listening to some good music or she probably talking to some guy or she might be sitting there alone and figuring out her thoughts. It's like so many different ways you could imagine her to be. And it's just like when you see it, you feel it. You feel the painting. You feel the roughness of her, the 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 voice of her, how she could talk to you and how she could love you. It's so many different ways. Her hair is like, it is like one of the most brilliant pieces of work. It is brilliant. And it's, and it's detailed. And it shows you stress. And it shows you love. And it shows you life. And so, again, it's hope. It's hope. And it just, and also the beauty of a black woman, because she would be somebody I'll walk in and be curious about, almost like it's Macy Gray. I would be curious about Macy Gray. I would be curious about wanting to hang out with her, or sit with her, or talk to her, or whatever. It's like we have so much depth in our lives, and that's what art does. You see, it just gives you so much. Okay, I'm moving on, because I think I'm talking too long about it. Okay, memory. Art focuses in on the essence of the scene rather than the whole of it. It comes in on what is memorable from the scene the artist was viewing. Art records and preserves, I mean, sorry, art records and preserves emotions. So, with that, let me tell y'all. Um, It really does. It really does. Now, the most, the most, um. Uh, the oldest of this is like you know Egyptian hieroglyphics, hieroglyphics and things like that. But my favorite one is in, in Catholic art. Okay, so in Catholic art, some any I don't think it was I think it was the Renaissance period. Really, I think it was a war or something. And lemons would cost a lot of money because they couldn't get lemons everywhere. So they would have to go and travel to get the lemons and trade and all this different stuff. And they, they showed a table. It's just a table setting. And it's just a lot of food. And the person actually had to go off to war. They had to leave the food to go off to fight a war. And so if you don't know the backstory, all you thinking about it says this is just a still life. Oh, that's a still life. But the backstory about the still life is, is that this person actually had to go off the war. And you knew that this person was had money. And they also had, um, what is it? And they also had culture. They also had, you know, they also were involved with other cultures too. Because they had all these different things on the table that they couldn't get in their own, in, in their own area. So that's like one of my favorites just because of the backstory because it's like, oh, that's a deep picture. You know, you look at a picture of a table setting and you think, man, this, you know, that's just a still life, bitch. That's just a picture. That's just a photograph. Another one that does this for me is uh, there's this lady. It's, uh, she does, it's all in black and white, and I think this is gorgeous. She takes these photos, and it's just like people in the kitchen doing their hair because that's the stuff we do in the kitchen. We do our hair in the kitchen. Hispanic people don't know, that. No, don't know that. When I was going out with my Hispanic guy and I was doing my hair, and he was like, no, nah, you go to the bathroom. It's like, no, but we do our hair in the kitchen. That's what we do it at because um, of the hot comb you know we just used to we and and you never have her in your food it's amazing to me how we never have her in our food but then you go in the kitchen where people have where white people have animals sorry i live in the black and white area well you go into a kitchen where white people have animals and they have cats and she on the couch and all that and the her is in the food you know it's just such a big difference in life but what i'm saying is like it's just like um i love her art because I love it. They sit in the kitchen and do they her. 
Uh, they sit in the kitchen and have a talk as a family. Then that's another picture where they sit in the kitchen. And it's so simple. And, it, and, and what gives it life is that it's just like one drop light in the middle. It's a drop light that hangs down in the middle of the table. Um, they in the kitchen drinking. You know, she in the kitchen having a drink by herself. You can form an entire story from her situation of the, just them in the kitchen. I myself did a series of one of my friends and I just loved her smile. And I liked the way that she used to like do her hair different, differently and stuff like that. One of my supposed friends, cause she for real, not a friend. But anyway, um, when I thought she was my friend, I did a series of her and it was just like her smiling and how her face changed. And that was just where I saw her at the end. You see what I'm saying? It, it's, it's, it's just a setting. Uh, I remember I did a photograph. I, I did. I had the pinhole, not the pinhole camera. I had the one where you have to get under the hood. I forgot the name of it. I had that big ass camera and I would take it around in this big ass box. So anyway, um, when I got to use it, I got good pictures. I got the color is so vibrant that comes out of the pictures. It was just like what I was looking for was just color. So I found old cars and different scenes in St. Louis to look at. St. Louis is a great place to take fo uh, photographs, you know, if you really into that. But um, it's it was it's just the memory. It's it's like it's just just like the same as when we take pictures of birthday parties and uh, we take pictures of celebrations and different things like that. Those are the memories, but also those memories can be artistic as well and as simple as you need them to be. That's why I like the artists who did this whole situation with everything they do in the kitchen. You know, you know they at the kitchen table or the dining room table. And it's it's sort of the same idea of what what that what the painting was conveying from the Renaissance period. Just that, you know, at this time, these this is what, what my life was like. This was my culture, you know. And that's all those pictures do is give culture. And I think that's one of the most beautiful things about us. So people can come with all this weird shit and all this fucked upness or whatever. But I really do think that black people have a lot to say. I know you do. And that's why we're going through this period right now. Because what we have to say, it needs to be expressed. All of it. All of it. And now I just came up with another piece called Trees. Because I really do want to tear a tree down. Now, let me tell y'all this story. It's a house down here. And it looked like a plantation house. And all the details I'm telling you guys, that's what this house has. At the top level of it, where the where the where the uh, tre not the trellis, but the uh, the balcony is, it's one light that sits in the middle. They could have put a chandelier up there. If I ever if I ever think about buying a house, I would love to buy this one. But it looks like it's a chandelier. Then on the bottom porch, it's a porch, like you know, like the plantation. It's, it surely looks like a plantation house, just smaller. So one day, me and this guy were out talking, and I was telling him about the house. I was actually talking about the house at the exact moment this happens. So we talking about the house, and I told him, I said, every time I walk past there, I pray. Because, you know, I think slaves lived there, or somebody, you know, or somebody there, something happened there that wasn't right. And he told me that the guy that lived there, he said he lived there by himself. So I guess the guy died must have died, because... Now the place is condemned and it's like old cars and they got different houses and stuff in the back. So as we talking, the fucking tree broke. And I actually had told him that too. I said, you know, I think that black people, if we ever got pissed off, we would want to cut down all these fucking trees. You know, the tree broke. A dead tree, it just broke. And we heard it cracking and it just fell over. Half of the tree broke and fell over. And I'm like, what the fuck? They, are you fucking kidding me? And the sad thing was, it was just a, a young black girl and her daughter or her sister that just walked by. They just missed it by like a couple minutes. Because while they were walking past us, the tree just fell over. It's disturbing. But at the same time, it was so satisfying. I don't know. Because I needed it for a tree at that moment to just be cut. You know, like, I just needed something. I needed that release. Even, and the reason why is because, you know, Buddhism, I'm, I think I'm a Buddhist or something. But I don't know what I am. I'm not saying I am, definitely. But what I'm saying is, like, at that point, I did. I needed to release the pain like that. 
I needed my pain to be released. I needed an axe to cut down a tree. And I'm telling y'all, I think it just like, it just physically failed. It was so releasing. It was so releasing. It was, it was just such a good release. Oh my God, I don't know. I don't know, it was dead anyway. I didn't take the picture though. I didn't take a picture. They, they have since removed the tree in the last couple of weeks. But memories, it just that that's what it'll do. It will actually it'll actually help you set your memories, you know, good ones and bad ones and just like uh that's why I think um Harry Potter is brilliant, the writer. Because she would put those pictures up and the people would actually be in that time. You know, they would be stuck in that picture and they would be doing whatever. They would be moving about in that time. And so even if they were mean or stupid or whatever, all you had to do is pass by the asses. You know, flip that bitch over if you didn't want to hear them. But that's what it is. It's just like, it's just your memories. It's your thoughts. It's everything that you have um, that you want to celebrate and keep. But also it could be, it could be those bad memories too. So that's what art does is therapy. And remember, it could be anything. It could be from cooking to how you gather water, how you dance, what you flow like, with all those different things that we all do. All that stuff is art, whether you want to know it or not. When you decorate your bathroom, that's art. Uh, the way you put colors together for your outfits, that's art. If the blue doesn't match that blue and it, your shoes are different color, you know that's art. When you notice all those things, if you notice that that person got too many colors on and you don't like it, why don't you like it? What's different about it? What does it, what is it, what feeling does it convey to you? Do you really care or do you not care? You see, because some of us will really care and it would be actually a situation where we would, where it would be very uncomfortable for us as to a person that did care and they would feel very comfortable with it. And so it's like, okay, what memory do you have that, that tells you that this isn't, that this, that these, that this color system couldn't be or that this wouldn't be a situation? I had a guy who was supposed to be a friend uh, who told me uh, he, his belt don't match his shoes. And I was like, so? What the fuck difference do that make? If his belt don't match his shoes, you know? Um, that's his artistic ability, but that's because uh, as men, that's what we feel. Um, I know this guy did a post about his haircuts and how he was like, uh, he felt condemned as a man to actually have to do it, to ha actually have haircuts. And he said he's hated it for a long, he's hated it. His brother confirmed it, confirmed the post and said, yeah, every time I touched his hair or whatever, that he would just go crazy about it. And so, um, it's like, well, you know, he stopped getting haircuts and he looks good. You know, either way it goes, everybody looks good. So, um, yeah, you have to start to think about why do you feel this way? Why do you feel her heart needs to be straight? Why, why do you feel like this person needs to be this way? And that's a, an artist's way for us, again, to get over being uncomfortable. We have to rebalance ourselves, see what our comfort levels is, because a lot of that stuff comes from beliefs that we have been taught through a white system. You see, it's not coming from a belief of yourself. It's coming from a belief that it has been taught through a white system. So anyway, that's it for today, y'all. I I love talking about this because this is, I'm not only an artist, but art therapy has been helping me for a long time. And I did not know, I did not know for a long time that that's how I was processing my life through art. Um, Even though I knew about art therapy, that's just how I process my life. I process the pain. I process everything that way. Um. So I can't wait to finish my projects even. I hope they don't take me. They usually don't take me a long time because I want to see what the result is because I'm amazed at myself a lot of times. I am truly, y'all don't know how amazed I am that I can draw. Because I thought I couldn't draw for so long, I thought it was a gift that I did not have. And I actually have the gift. That And now that I know I have the gift, I cannot believe I have the gift. Dude, how does that sound? It is so nuts how I'm going. But that's just how it is. That's just what it is. It's like, um, but yeah, my name is Shante black brown sugar talk under black unicorns and process today process. Try to find something to process. Have a beautiful day. Y'all.